Republic. We continue our discussion of the role of Parliament. We're now joined on the line by Festus Kiamo, his legal counsel, Festus Kiamo Chambers. He joins us, as I said, uh, on the line. Festus, thanks for your time. Just maybe a quick summation from you in terms of the achievements of the last Assembly and your expectations of the incoming uh, National Assembly and potentially the kind of issues that it will have to deal with, given we're talking about uh, a battle that's neck and neck between PDP and uh, the APC. Well, first of all, um, the decisions and positions of members of the National Assembly over the years have largely been dictated by their political affiliations. Um, you don't have situations like in the United States um, where on very critical issues you may have uh, Republicans even supporting a Democratic um, president and uh, vice versa. Uh, you don't have such situations here. You have situations where, good or bad, um, all the PDP senators and members of the House of Reps, they always line up behind the president on any issue, whether the, the issue has public acceptability or not. And then uh, you have a situation where the opposition senators and members of the House, they oppose such uh, matters. Now, what I expect from the new um, National Assembly is that we should see senators and members of the House rising above party affiliations and thinking more about the national interest thinking more about uh, supporting policies and, you know, bills that um, generally have uh, general um, acceptability to Nigerians rather than their party. Uh, you can see that most uh, decisions in the last uh, few years have been um, either, uh, they have been uh, affected by such uh, party affiliations. So right. this is what I expect from the incoming um, National Assembly. Right, Professor Swale here. Your thoughts about the quality of the people in the National Assembly? Recently, we've seen a lot more people that you can describe as technocrats coming to the fore. Do you think this may have any impact on the quality of uh, lawmaking and the urgency of lawmaking in Nigeria? Well, absolutely, uh, because um, the more we begin to see the work at the National Assembly as, mo as work that um, has to do more with. Um, um, law making, strictly speaking, not uh, money making, not uh, a place, a dumping ground for politicians and uh, a means to compensate political uh, talks and um, affiliates, uh, we will begin to raise the quality of uh, debate in the House. So, um, with the cleaning up of our electoral process, uh, and, you know, getting it right little by little, we expect that um, such um, people will come through to the House. Okay, Festus, Esther here. Let's talk about how much it costs to maintain our lawmakers. The issue of their wages, allowances uh, the, that they collect a year in, year out, that has always been a topic of debate. Uh, we've never seen a, a grand conclusion. Just this year for the 2015 budget, 150 billion naira has been budgeted for the National Assembly. Now, of course, let's talk about belt tightening of, as you know, Nigeria is now facing lower revenues and everybody is expected to take a haircut. The president has said that he will take a haircut, but we did see uh, some resistance from the lawmakers uh, saying that they would take uh, just a slight haircut. Uh, is this an issue we will continue to talk about going forward, even as we have more uh, candidates coming uh, into the National Assembly? Well, I hope we settle this issue once and for all. I have not seen a situation where, uh, you know, the remuneration of members of the National Assembly will be subjected to so much uncertainty and debate. Um, I've done a lot of work in this area with the, with the EFCC. In fact, uh, remember, I, I, I had to assist the commission to charge um, the leadership of the house to court uh, for criminal um, breaches of um, alleged criminal breaches of subsections of our revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission uh, uh, laws uh, so uh, i and of course the matter is still on appeal because the lower court um, disagreed with us on certain areas mm. but the matter is still on appeal so uh, i do not think that uh, we should be so uncertain about the remuneration of lawmakers by now, we should have a clear template. Whether we are reducing or increasing it, but I have support, of course, a lot of reduction in the in the remuneration of the lawmakers. And then uh, once they do that, we should be clearly, we should be very certain about um, what goes into their uh, pockets at the end of every quarter, at the end of every month. But the situation we have now, we're still subject to all kinds of debate and uncertainty. It's unhealthy for us. Mm. It's certainly unhealthy. One figure that I've heard that these guys reckon in terms of. Uh, 
fees as well as uh, salaries is somewhere in the region of two million dollars annually i and i saw a figure suggesting that perhaps there's no other lawmaker who makes as much as that but in terms of just the size of the houses of the two houses the senate as well as uh, the national assembly are those sizes appropriate for the democracy that nigeria is and for the size of the population well, ordinarily it should be because we are talking about a democracy where you have a voice representing every single constituency in this country. Every single part of this country should have a person at the center who can quickly raise a voice if anything is, is wrong with that particular part of the country. It will be difficult really for a president or somebody sitting in Abuja to have his eyes on all you know, the local governments in this country, all the constituencies. Mm. You really need representatives from all parts, but it has been abused. I must say it has been abused because you don't have true representatives of the people these days. There are people who go to Abuja to represent their personal interests. They hardly know mm. and care what happens in their various constituencies. And so it is not really achieving the aim for which such law was, uh, uh, such uh, provisions were put in the constitution. Yeah. The, the provisions for representation in the constitution are not there for fun. They were really borrowed from the United States because it works in those areas where you have true representation at all levels. Uh, so it, it's something that is ordinarily good for democracy. Perhaps what we need to do is to make sure that we fine tune our electoral system to make sure that they are truly representative mm. of their people. They should be real voices of their people because the other way around, if we, if we have a knee-jerk reaction to what is going on in terms of uh, yeah. the large size and all that, we should we will be injuring democracy one way too yeah. because that means you have, uh, if they cut down their sizes, for example, you may, you, you can have, for example, uh, just uh, two or three House of Rep members representing a yeah. very large state. Okay. When he may not uh, really know what is happening in various uh, parts of that state. Absolutely. Uh, Festus Keamo, thank you. He joined us on the line. He's from Legal Council Company, uh, Festus Keamo Chambers. In the